Well, welcome. It's great to see all of you here. And uh, I'm Court Lewis. I'm the acting uh, president of the board of directors of the Tanasi Arts and Heritage Center here in uh, Unicoi, Tennessee. And this is the second of 17 meetings we'll have under a Tennessee Arts Commission grant uh, that we have over the next uh, nine months or so. And some will be live and some will be virtual like this one. The first one we had was, uh, was a live event. And uh, tonight's event is called Drawings from Nature. Our presenter is Matthew Clark. He's an artist who lives in the Orlando, Florida area. And his two genres are drawing and watercolor painting. Matt's a native of uh, Irwin, uh, Tennessee, and uh, he teaches art and natural science at a Midland High School in the Orlando area. And what Matt will uh, be demonstrating in his presentation tonight combines those two areas of expertise with his teaching skills to show us how to make drawings from nature. So that's the title of our event tonight, Drawings from Nature. So just quickly before we begin, I'd like to ask everyone to please mute yourself. And also, if you would, go to the chat that you'll see at the bottom of your screen. If you mouse over your screen, you'll see uh, some um, options in, in a menu uh, uh, row pa uh, pop up there at the bottom. And so if you want to go to the chat at some point, you don't have to do it right now, but go to the chat and type in your name and email address. And we'd like to get that um, because it's a required part of the network of uh, the uh, recording and record keeping that we, uh, we have to have for our uh, Tennessee state grant. And then afterwards, after uh, this is over, a day or so later, we'll email you a short form that we'd like you to fill out. It's very, very brief. Uh, that will include just a couple of comments that you might have about uh, about the meeting. Again, that's something that we are expected to to uh, collect and keep for for our grant. And uh, so it'll also let us uh, once we have your email address, let let us keep you informed about future events like this, uh, both uh, live and virtual. So. Um, Finally, we will uh, like to make some time at the end of this uh, presentation for some Q&A. And uh, so at that point, you, you'll need to uh, unmute yourself to do that. Well, Matt, I think we're ready for me to turn this over to you to show us how to do uh, drawings from nature. Okay. Well, thank you, Court. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I'm going to do my best to show you how it is that I go about doing drawings and paintings. Um, I hope you find it informative. Uh, I. I'm not going to stand here the whole time and you know and shake my phone around here. I've got a, a little uh, camera mount up here and, and I, I've tried it out and I think this is going to be the best um, way of showing what I do here. So first off, let is, is that clear to everybody what's going on here? Yeah. All right. So let me just show you my setup here. I'm in I'm in my room at uh, my school here and the materials that I'm going to be using tonight. Pretty high tech stuff here, you know. This is state of the art. Uh, number two pencil uh, is how I start off. Now I do have some watercolors over here. These um, are Schmincke uh, watercolors. It, they're little half pans, uh, which I like very much. And these are just Prismacolor colored pencils. And then I've got some uh, different gouaches here and a variety of uh, brushes and. Um, brushes, pencils, erasers, knives, things like that. So let me uh, get you started here. This little book here called Flow Nat. This is what I'm gonna be drawing in. Now, I'm gonna tape myself down so I don't fall off while I'm working. This, this is the book that I use uh, to do drawings in. I teach natural history, which is just the plants and animals that live uh, around here, I, I've kind of drawn an imaginary circle around Central Florida uh, of, of about an hour's drive. And the class I teach is, just talks about the plants and animals. And as part of that, we do drawings, lots, lots and lots of drawings of uh, the things that we find. And um, the idea is that the kids make these drawings, they make observations, and they're really sort of learning about you know, the things that they may pass up every day. You know, they might find you know different weeds and things that they don't really understand but hopefully through making drawings of them they come to understand them a little bit better uh, a lot of the plants that i choose to draw i you know fish and bugs i like a lot but a lot of the plants that i choose to draw are, are really just little weeds um, i think they're very beautiful things that we just sort of tend to pass by um, there's a little one called uh, florida snow and then that's just just a an oak branch with some acorns that have fallen off. Um, 
So uh, I want to do one of these tonight for you guys. And uh, with any luck, it, it, it works out. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like either by the end. The plant that I've chosen is uh, called Spanish Needle. And it's, it's a little uh, aster. It's in the aster family. It's, it's a weed here. I don't, I don't know if it grows up in Tennessee. I can't remember if it does or not. But it's um, super, super uh, common here. Uh, it's seeds, or those, some of those little seeds that grab onto your clothes and won't let go. So if you don't have it in your yard, you will eventually. And once you get it there, you'll never get rid of it. But I like it. It's a nice, you know, sort of like a, a little daisy. So I'm going to make a drawing of that best I can here. And just show you how I uh, take it from a blank page here up to you know maybe you know, maybe something more like this over the next hour or so. So I've got uh, a jar full of you know, Spanish needle here that I'll be doing. Um, all right. So you guys are going to have to let me know if you can't if if you can't see this or if if I'm if I'm doing something wrong here, that makes it impossible to see. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is just figure out, you know, what part of the plant that it is that, that I want to see and uh, make a very quick drawing of that. I, I like to draw very quickly, if at all possible, um, so that I can get the whole thing down. So you don't, you, the last thing you want to do is spend so much time on little details and then find out, oh, this doesn't actually fit on my paper. Uh, what do I do now? So I've got some buds here, uh, a little bit of leaves up here in the top. I'm gonna just indicate those very quickly. And I'm just drawing in a number two pencil, very, uh, very easy to erase. Um, in fact, most of my, my pencil work will disappear by the, by the end of the drawing or by the end of the painting. Uh, I, you know, I'll, I'll go to the art store and I'll buy the expensive pencils sometimes, but I find that these, these Ticonderogas that you, as a kid, you took your tests on, um, they work just fine. No reason for expensive things on this end. All right, so stems down here. I like drawing plants because I, I'm not really very familiar with them. If, if I draw you know, fish or, or insects or birds, I, I've observed those forever. And I, I don't feel like I learn as much when I'm, I'm doing those as I do with plants because you know, making observations about how the how the, the leaves alternate and what kind of shapes they make, and, you know, how are they clustered around that stem? That's that's all new news to me, and I, I like it very much. All right, yeah, that looks like it's showing up. So now I want to start making. Once all the big stuff is down, now I want to start making decisions about smaller order things, like how how many petals does this thing have? And it has got five. And they're all different shapes. So I really want to slow down now and uh, see what shapes these petals are. You know, um, children, when they draw, they, they like to do a, you know, oh, it has, it has five petals. Let's you know, color. That's, I, I don't want to do that. I want to draw each individual petal as it is with all of its little imperfections and, and oddities. I notice on the tips of these petals, there's like these little uh, fringy kind of teeth, I guess. 
There are little grooves that run the length of each of the petals too. I'll just indicate those. I like choosing these common things, uh, especially for my students, because they're, they're so accustomed to just maybe walking from the house to the car, and that's all their outside time. And maybe they see these plants or, or animals, but they don't really pay attention to them. And if, if I take the time to draw them, or if I make them take the time to draw them, usually for my classes, we're spending at least 45 minutes you know, on one drawing, maybe it's two 45 minute sessions. But they'll, they'll come away and say, wow, these things were much more sophisticated, much more complicated than I thought. There's a lot more going on. So there's a one bloom, one flower. I'll draw a little stem there that it's on. There's another one that's going to open, or it would have opened in a few days had I not picked it. This is one of those little flowers that grows here. And uh, it's actually very important for the state for uh, honey production. It's like the, I think behind clover and oranges, but that's, that's about it. It's very, very important. But it, boy, is it, a, is it a weed. It takes over your whole yard if you let it. But I remember talking to my wife when we lived in uh, Pennsylvania, and she used to get so upset about the dandelions and the violets, <laughs> you know, the weeds in the yard. And I said, when did you start thinking of flowers as weeds? These are really beautiful little things. I don't think she ever agreed with me. I think she just still just thought they were weeds. All right, so let's see. There's two. I've got under here another little leaf. I, I don't I don't care about staying on one page either if, if the drawing demands that I go to the other page then I, I go to the other page and I like these books as opposed to pulling out an easel or um, a, a, a big pad of paper I like these because they're they're small and easy to take with you. I'll, I'll take these sometimes out with me as I'm, as I'm hiking or making my way through the woods. You just don't ever know what you're going to find. And you can make a quick drawing of it. Looks like I can get one more flower up here. These uh, flowers are called Spanish needles because of the, the seeds on them have got two little teeth that like to grab onto your clothes or your dog's hair. And uh, they're kind of a pain in the neck to get them all off once they start getting on you. You take that book with you whenever you walk in the woods, Matt, and uh, I, stop I, and sketch? Yep, I do. Sometimes I'll take it and nothing happens, and I don't see anything that catches my eye, but it's small enough that I can, you know, take it with me, and it's not a big deal. These, uh, these, this book in particular, I should say, I bound this book. I, I make all my own books because I can make them the size that hmm. I want them. Oh, okay. And uh, use the materials that I like. Get the kind of the color paper, the the weight, the paper weight that I like. That was uh, something I learned when I was in college. I had a friend who was a bookbinder, and she showed me how to do. This is called a Coptic stitch, and she showed me, and I've I've never gone back to uh, buying buying drawing books anymore. I always make my own. 
imagine everything you're doing here from the materials and the technique and everything else is not any different than somebody would have done in the 1700s or the 1600s. Right. right. Yep. Not, not really all that different. Okay. So I think that's a pretty good start. That, that's a pretty adequate drawing. I've got the, you know, it looks like two flowers, two, I don't know, blooms that aren't open yet or one that is open is turning to seeds. And then I've got just some uh, leaves over here. So the next thing that I like to do is just mix up a, a baseline color, um, a, just like a, a generic. This, this flower is a, a very yellow green. So I'll, I'll show you. Here's the, or here's the leaves. They're, they're very yellow green. So what I like to do in the watercolor is make this mid-range green, uh, not too dark, not too light. I can uh, always go back and, and darken it. Um, one thing you'll find out is that I'm not really a, a, a purist about watercolor. Some people really are. Like they, it's, it's all watercolor. The white of the paper is, is the whitest white that you have. And I'm not, <laughs> that, that is not me. Uh, if you are that way, you know, fantastic. I, I really respect those kind of people, but I am, I will start off with watercolor and then I will move to colored pencils or, or gouache on top of watercolor. Um, watercolor is a, a transparent medium. So if you guys already know all of this stuff, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to you know, talk down to you or anything. Um, some of you are probably watercolors for years, but uh, watercolor is a transparent medium. You're supposed to see what's underneath. Uh, you, there's not supposed to be any such thing as white watercolor, not, not really. Your paper is your white, your brightest white, usually. But, um, for me, I, I'm not above using some white ink or or a white gouache if I if I really need it. Matt, is your um, subject lighted in a certain way, or do you yeah? Pay so to the light? my my setup here is I have a I've got a, a desk lamp that's it's, it's just on an arm here and I, I just have it set up right above here lighting the lighting the flowers and then it's just whatever ambient light that I have from from the fluorescence here in the room. One of the things that when I do these kind of drawings I like I, I like a nice even light so it's not too strongly lit because my my focus is the the structure of the plant the mm -hmm. um, you know what's going on it's not it's not really so much for the for the drama in it, I, I want to understand how the plant is put together, mm -hmm. or the insect, or you know, the skeleton, or the fish, or whatever it is that I'm drawing. And so I don't, I don't really set up for dramatic lighting. Uh, not on these kind of drawings, anyway. I don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I like these. Uh, water brushes here. I don't know if you use these or not, but they've uh, taken ballpoint pen technology and made paint brushes out of it. And I think that's just wonderful. The handle's full of water, so you can, these are nice and portable too. If you're, if you are out in the woods and you don't have a little cup full of water, you can just bring your water with you in the pen or in the brush. Mm -hmm. And they're cheap, so that's also a plus. I will also, as I'm making uh, these watercolors, when I'm learning about what this thing is, so sometimes I'll choose a plant or a, an animal and I don't actually know what it is. And I'll just start making the drawing and I'll maybe be kind of researching on the side, you know, 
what is this thing that I'm looking at? And so I'll write down things off on the side, maybe notes about where I found it, uh, what it is, what its name is. I always try to make notes about what the actual size of the, of the specimen is. Uh, I like to have those little written notes. I do actually go back sometimes and look mm -hmm. at what I've done and, or I'll see you know, something out in nature and I'll say, hey, I think I made a drawing of that. And I'll, I'll go back and look at my drawings and sure enough, I did. And uh, it's, a, it's a nice way of learning, a nice, nice way of knowing. I remember uh, years ago, I was hiking up on the Appalachian Trail, just up outside of Irwin, and I was with my Uncle Doug, and uh, we were up at the top of the mountain. He, he was itching to go, and I was itching to take a very long break, because I was tired. He was not tired at all. And I remember looking at this particular flower, had really caught my attention, and I said, hey, Uncle Doug, what kind of flower do you think that is? And he said, it's a red mountain flower, now let's move. <laughs> we gotta hike. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> different goals for hiking, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm always up for discovering what, whatever it is I can see out there. Other people are there just for the hike. I hmm. found that out. <laughs> All right. So I'm uh, getting to a good stopping place here. I'm going to uh, put the, the yellow in and then I've got to get a um, um, hairdryer. Let's see here. I don't know how... If you folks like to, when you do watercolors, if you mix on the paper here, or if you mix in the pan, or I don't know, everybody does it a little bit different. My, my students always ask me, how did you do this? And I always say, well, people do it different ways, but this is the way I do it. And the way I do it's the only way I know how to tell you. So I'm just gonna put this in there. There we go. Okay, this is this is a good start. Uh, I need to start putting layers on this now. I think actually, I think I'm going to look a little bit at shadows. A bit of shadows on these on these petals here. They're not totally light, so I've got a. I like to make things a little too dark and then lighten them up. I guess that's my non pure the non purest in me, the non purest watercolors. So these shadows are all a little too dark, which which is okay. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, my hairdryer is right on the other side of the room. Let me go get that real quick. All right, let's see if this uh, trips a breaker or something. We're not really supposed to have so many things plugged in. Every time the fire marshal comes in, we get <laughs> we get yelled at for all of the all of the high drain things that we have plugged in around here. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I've got this this sort of base green, 
And I'm going to just pull out uh, a bunch of different greens here and just start goofing around until I stumble on the right, uh, the right shades. So the first thing I notice is that on, on my plant here, the stems, there's some, there's some really yellow greens in here. And the way that this plant is catching the light is that the stems look very yellow green to me. So I'm gonna go in and just try to indicate that, yellow up this, uh, this painting a little bit. I never intend for the watercolor just to stand on its own. It, it's always gonna have some, some highlights by the, by the pencils. I, I learned this by watching uh, James Gurney. Uh, I don't know if you know him or not, but he's a he's a fantastic illustrator and, uh, and just a, a wonderful plein air painter and watercolorist. He's got wonderful videos online. His name's James Gurney, and I had always thought of uh, watercolor as kind of a pure thing, but there he is mixing watercolor and gouache and especially colored pencils in there. And it was just very impressive to me, it really kind of freed up my, my painting in a way that I didn't know it could be. So let's see here. I see that there's a dark vein that runs down the middle of these leaves like this and the, the little veins that branch off, branch off on the side are, are kind of yellow. So what I like to do is color the space between the veins. Uh, I'll, I'll do a close up here so you can see it a little better. Instead of trying to paint yellow veins, I paint the whole leaf kind of greenish yellow, and then color in around the veins. So that's, that's how I get the yellow veins in there is by coloring around the yellow. I wish that, is that coming across as very yellow? Like my, is that better? Is that... Uh, I think it was fine the way you had it before. I think, oh, okay, it's fine, yeah. okay. Yeah. I had to do all of this. Uh, we're, we've been back in school for a long time now, but I had to do all this teaching through Zoom and everything you know, last year and I, mm. I hated it a lot. I really hated that. And trying to trying to do drawings for kids over Zoom was I could just never get the lighting right. I could never nothing just ever worked quite right. It's hard when you've got you know 15 or 18 kids that you're you're trying to do drawings for them and or drawings with them, I should say. And also, you know, make sure that they're paying attention and not doing whatever it is that they would rather be doing in Zoom. On computers. So this leaf in particular looks pretty yellow off to the side. So put some yellow green out there. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm sorry. I can't. I. I couldn't, I didn't have audio. I mean, I didn't think I was on before. I can hear you now, Gail. Okay. Uh, Court, people are trying to get on and they don't, they can't get the link they're telling me. They're sending me a message on my iPhone. Huh. Yeah. The, uh, the people exactly. who are on use the same link. Uh, if they're trying to get on by phone, which I see a few people have, <clears throat> they'll need the passcode, which is in the original email that was sent. But Oh, okay. Uh, just tell them to look in the original email if they're on their phone trying to get in to use the password, which I can read it to you. Will you do that? <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. 
Um, hold on. It's it's nine nine four five three five. That's right. Thank you. Nine nine four five three five. Okay, I got it. Thank you very much. But if they're on a computer, they wouldn't need it. They can just click the link itself, and it goes right in. Mm -hmm. I think they're on their phone. <clears throat> I see, you know, some people coming in occasionally, more people. So I'll switch greens a lot. Uh, green is actually a pretty difficult color to use, I, I found. There's so many of them, warm greens, cool greens. I gravitate towards warm greens, like a, a yellow-based green as opposed to a, a, like a blue-based green. Um, So I'll, I'll switch it up. I've got three, four different colored greens all going here on this leaf right now. Um, what I was asking before when you couldn't hear me was when you began drawing the flower, could we see the flower? Like, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was sure. trying to say. Yeah, I could do that. This is, this is all very, very sophisticated high-tech stuff I'm doing here. Here it is. <laughs> that's that's ah, the flower. Okay. So you can see that that petal right here that's all twisted back, uh -huh. you know, and uh, everything's a little, all the petals are a little uneven. Um, yeah. yeah, there it is. It's just, it's just in a ball jar right yeah. here. I, I was just thinking maybe you could lay the flower about a drawing. Not trying to tell you what to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've made the drawing now. So now all I'm doing is, is the color part. So I wanted it to be nice and uh, uh, alert, you know, as I was as I was uh, making the drawing. But now that I'm just, I've got the drawing down. Now it's just color time. Yes. What's the name of the flower again, Matt? Biden's Alba. It's a Spanish needle. Oh, yeah. I think Biden's means two, 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 two teeth. And uh, here's a here's a, a little seed pod of it. Oh. And these oh. these little oh. things they <clears throat> come up on your clothes and yeah, you know, yeah. you track them all over the place. Yeah, they're terrible. I call them hitchhikers. I think they're called hitchhikers, hitchhikers and also yeah. tigers lice. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's called. It's called. Uh, I I know that it's got a bunch of different names. Beggar's tooth is one of them. Beggar's um, lice, yeah. Beggar's lice, that's a good one too. I haven't heard that one. The uh, the Latin name makes him sound so uh, so be beneficial. <laughs> yeah, Biden's Alba, yeah, the white two tooth or, or something like right. that. Two white teeth. Yeah, so I I will write that um, here on the side. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the name of the president. No, not, no, nothing at all. <laughs> well, we can have a good time with that. Can, we? <laughs> can you spell Biden's? I can't see that very well. Uh, just like the president, B I D E N S, oh, Biden's. Okay. Yeah, it really is just like him. So let's see here. I'm going to hop on over to the, uh, I like to jump around. I don't, I don't like to sit on any one particular area of a painting. I like kind of keeping the whole thing going at the same time. So I'm gonna this yellow here is, is a little too a little too weak. So I'm gonna just start to indicate it's, it's a little deeper yellow there. Same over here. A little more orange in it. I was telling court yesterday, I don't, I don't have one of these. It's not like a cooking show, you know, where I can say, well, we do this part. And then two hours later, this is what you end up with. And I pull something out from under the counter. This is all, it's all real time here. <laughs> Got a little richer there. Um, 
this paper that I'm using is an off-white. It's it's a, a buff color. So just putting these little petals next to this uh, deep yellow here makes it appear, you know, that they're they're brighter than they actually are. Mm -hmm. But I'll I'll brighten them up here soon. Is, is it a heavy weight paper that you're using? It is. It's it's a re did I use re I think I used a Stonehenge. I used either Stonehenge or Reeves BFK. Reeves is a is a uh, made by Arches, and it's a it's a printmaking, uh, drawing, water kind of a multi-purpose paper. And it's 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 really nice. It's it's my favorite paper. Uh, the it's got very little tooth. You know, it's a very very smooth paper, and it um, it's got little very little tooth. It's very heavy duty. You could I could I could paint on this all day long, and it would never bleed through to the other side. The paper would never deteriorate. But it's it's thin enough that you can put it into a book like I have here, mm -hmm. and um, it you know you, you can get some of that hot press uh, watercolor paper that you know the 140 pound uh, paper and it it's you know it's stiff as a board and it's it's not really good for book binding, so I've I've always had to find the uh, the happy medium, you know, a good strong paper. But that's not so strong that you can't you can't bind it into a book. So while you're doing that, what I was saying early on, this is the beginning of fall break for the school, and everyone's downtown Irwin getting ready for the Apple Festival. Those are the two things. People are either zooming out of town for fall break or uh, doing apple festival things. I didn't even think of that when we did the date. It is apple festival coming up, isn't it? Yes, yeah. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's first weekend in October. Is that always what it is? Yes. Uh huh. I haven't been in Irwin for Apple Festival in a long time. Is it cooling off up that way at all? A little. Uh -huh. Beautiful. We're down to about 88 in the daytime now. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to feel like fall here and it's getting darker a little earlier. So okay. it's, it's been spectacular weather, really. Yeah. It has been gorgeous, yeah. And for once, not raining. Yeah. yeah. So I like to, um, what I'm doing here is where these, these stems go into the flowers there. I like to darken it up just as it's coming up to a, a light spot there. I just like to make that mm -hmm. um, that contrast, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that contrast really, really obvious. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. This, what was this flower? So this is also pretty dark down here. Back. Let me do this. Uh, different green in there. Okay. And the, the uh, watercolors, you can go over them, or, or the colored mm -hmm. pencils, you can go over them with watercolor. Uh, doesn't hurt them at all. I like to think of uh, colored pencils, no matter you know, what you do with them, they're always a little bit grainy, but the watercolor goes in right behind and just fills mm -hmm. in all the little grainy spots where you miss. You can get watercolor pencils, and I have some of those, where it's essentially a dry watercolor in colored pencil form, and you can use them just like colored pencils or you can uh, wet them afterwards and they get very, very rich. 
I don't use those too much, but just every now and again I move. On your leaves, you and I can see you were saying you go in between the lines, the mm -hmm. yellow. Yes. Did you draw any of the yellow lines with a pencil or not? I did paint? not. Okay. I didn't. Um, sometimes I will if it if it seems like a. It, it, it's crucial to identifying the plant, you know, I, I will do that. But if it just seems like on these, it's just a lot of little ribs. Um, mm -hmm. I won't worry about it too much. I'll just kind of wing it. But yeah, if it's, uh, you know, some of them, it, it really matters. You know, it's going to have this much venation in the, in the leaves or in the, in the petals, then I'll, I'll stop and do the real, the real number. I do that with, when I do fish, I'll, um, I'll count the the rays coming out of the fins, or if I'm doing insects, I'll uh, I'll count the veins in the wings, mm. and then uh, really just make sure that that's accurate. That's one of the hard things. I, I don't do it with scales. I, I, if I was a real professional illustrator, I would count their scales and everything. And I tell my students that I I, dem I really demand that they do a pretty accurate job, and and you know they get upset, and I say, well, you know, if I was a real hard nose, I'd make you count scales and stuff and i'm not going to do that so i'm going to hit this with a hair dryer real quick I've got a white colored pencil here. Let's let's see. Sometimes this works really well and sometimes not as well as I would like it. There we go. So now that I've got that dark, those dark shadows painted in there, I can go in with this white colored pencil, pick out the brights again. And since the paper is just off white itself, mm -hmm. the, uh, the white tends to show up pretty well. You have a favorite brand of pencil? Prismacolor works really great. Uh, you can get yeah. more expensive yeah. ones. Uh, you can get cheaper ones. I wouldn't get, I don't like the cheaper ones because their um, pigment to wax ratio or whatever the, whatever the vehicle is for the pigment is, you know, too high. There's, there's too much, too much wax, not enough pigment, but Prismacolor is good. I've been using them for years and they don't fade and they work pretty good. What I know you can buy, what's that? Well, you said the name of that pencil again. Prismacolor. Prisma. Prisma. That's it. Prismacolor. Oh, okay. Thank you. They're 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 good. Professionals use them. Mm -hmm. um, amateurs like me use them. You could buy uh, very fancy ones like Caran d'Arche <laughs> if you want to get very fancy, but those are a little little pricey for me. Do you buy the paper online? Uh, there's an art store here that I go to that I buy it, but you can buy it online. I buy uh, a lot of my paper from Dick Blick. I think it's just called Blick now. Can you spell that? Uh, B uh, D I C K B L I C K. And the the paper I use is is Reeves. It's R I V E S. It's you know it's not cheap. It's it's about five or six bucks for a 22 by 30 inch piece of paper uh -huh. it's not going to break the bank but you know you don't want to waste it either uh -huh. so now that i have that i think what i'm going to do is i've got some gouache here and boy this is this is real professional level stuff here i'm just going right out of the tube and I'm gonna find some really bright highlights here. So 
so that light just rakes across these. I've moved the flowers all over the place, so the, the light's raking in different areas, but that's okay. I see that there's a just sort of a natural bump, you know, in the leaves, and that seems to be catching the light on these ridges. Gouache I find a little tricky to use. It, it always dries a little darker than uh, when you put it on. So sometimes I'll find myself uh, putting it on and uh, just really loving the way it looks wet and then it dries and I say, oh, I need to lighten that up a little bit. So does it, does it always work better for you if you've got something with an undertone to it, but there's a predominant color to paint the whole base as the undertone and then cover that over with the predominant color, leaving the base showing through kind of? Yes, exactly. Yes. It's kind of counterintuitive. You'd think almost the opposite, but I can see it works. Yeah. Yeah. It, you do think that it, it, it lends a kind of gravity to your, to your work right away. If you've got that just kind of a darkness to it uh, right off the bat, it's, you know, you're drawing white on, if you could think about drawing white on black as opposed to black on white, uh, I find it to be much more, much more interesting if it's, um, the other way around, the opposite way of drawing light on dark. Let's see here, I'm looking for a pencil. Oh, I could show this too. The way I sharpen my pencils, I don't like, I don't like pencil sharpeners. I feel like they, they waste a lot. Well, here I am, I'm trying to do it under the camera and I'm wasting a lot now too. But you, <laughs> you can get a really sharp little point with a knife. So I'm going to go in here on these, this little area in here, pretty dark here in the middle. Again, I, I'm just really giving an impression of this. I'm not drawing every single little stamen or anther or whatever these things are. I'm just, uh, giving you the, the impression that there's a lot of little dots in here. I'm like drawing hair. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you draw every one of them, I don't know, maybe you know something I don't. I don't think that's a good idea to do. So we're getting pretty close on this little flower here. This little lead flower. Bring that up there to touch. So what I'll do now, I'll uh, remove some of that pencil work that I had from earlier. Again, some people like to use uh, kneaded erasers or well, um, you know, white plastic erasers. I I don't I don't mind using these at all. I will, I will use a brush. Brush away the little eraser boogers there. I, I don't know how many times I've, I've had a painting about done and I, I do this and I brush my hand across it and I just, there's one little spot of wet paint still that just, you know, streaks across the whole thing. And then I try to have a good attitude about it. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> so here's where I am on on the flower. Oh, look, there's an actual flower petal. So that, that's come along pretty quick, I think. Um, get that little flower and I'll work, I think I'm gonna work on this other flower. I'm, I'm kind of on a flower roll here. So I'm gonna hit this one up here. I'll, uh, it's, it's this one right here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and darken in those petals.
hit it with a hair dryer really quick. I find that you probably could just let the color pencil be it for the white, but I find that these little white highlights here with the gouache, it, it's not immediately obvious, but I think it really does bring something to the, to the picture. Nice. I'm almost finished with this book. So it's, um, I only have a couple pages left. So when I, when I hit it, it's, it's wanting to close. Can you spell that gouache thing? Yeah, it's a G O U A C H E. Here. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a made up word, really. It, uh, <laughs> if, if watercolor, if watercolor is transparent, gouache is watercolor, it's opaque watercolor. Um, you, you can water it down to be transparent if you want to. You can, um, you can paint with it transparently, but it's really meant to be painted in, in opaque colors. And it dries very, very fast. And it's, it's very flat when it dries. There's no, no gloss to it at all. I, I, I find it very appealing in some ways. In a, in a limited way, if you get it wet, you can pick it up and make it spread again. Whereas if you paint in acrylics, it dries really fast. It can dry flat, but once it's dry, that's it. It's plastic. It's not ever gonna, ever gonna move. Mm -hmm. All right, so then I'll get Little flower parts over here. Some dark flower parts. This is coming along a little better than I thought. I, I, I'm, I'm moving a little faster than I <laughs> than I typically like to, but I, this has turned out okay. I think. I was I was a little nervous about that. I said, "Oh, I don't know. A drawing in an hour? We'll we'll see." <laughs> Usually, I'll do drawings with my students. Uh, we'll do like I call them directed drawings. It's like, I'll do the drawing and they'll just follow along. And usually I'm just kind of waiting on them, twiddling my thumbs a little bit. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is the opposite, which is fine. How long are your classes at school? 45 minutes. So wow. we'll, uh, <laughs> I have them five days a week, 45 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. I have seventh graders and twelfth graders and everybody in between. Are they set up like you are here, where you're just looking at their work, or can you see their faces, or how does that? Or is yeah, it they're they're in school. This this is the classroom I teach in. They're they're just at tables out there. We. No, I mean, yeah. I meant when you're doing it virtually, you know, in the past. Oh no, yeah. When I'm when it's virtual, uh, yeah, I I see them just exactly like I'm looking at you guys right now. And that's why this this was very very difficult to do virtually. I I, I think it was uh, with kids. You know, they're they're mm -hmm. 15 years old. They don't the the temptations for them to do other things online is just too great. They they don't resist that temptation. Yeah. We we have debates here at school about um, good responsible use of technology and how are the kids mature enough to do it, and I. And I've said, well, it, as soon as any of you can prove to me that you're mature enough to do it, I'll believe that the kids do it. <laughs> I say, 
I, I, one time, I don't know if I stepped on toes or not, but I said in a faculty meeting, I said, I sit at the back of these faculty meetings and I know all of you are not taking notes. I know some <laughs> of you are shopping. I know some of you are grading papers. <laughs> so, so please do not tell me a teenager is uh, staying on task while he's online. It's, right. it's mm-hmm. not human nature. It's not possible. Hmm. But if I can, if I can get them here, uh, with just paper in front of them and nothing but their nothing but their books in front of them and the thing, the object. I've got a pretty good shot. So let me try this here. Sometimes I'll get a little much down there and just pick it up like that. Okay, sharpen some pencils here. So, uh, there's a volleyball game, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> people see me. They're like, "Hey, I'll stop in and talk to Matt for a while." <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. So look, I just did it. I put my hand in some uh, in some wet paint there that I wasn't looking for. I'm not. I'm, I'm not quite getting this. The darkness of this leaf that I want to get. So I keep going over it here trying to get this crisp yellow line. I like doing this very much. I find it to be a meditative in a way it's it's very repetitive especially on on the leaves here yeah it's looking better i find it meditative to watch i do too <laughs> oh good yeah is there a fine line between meditative and boring i, <laughs> I hope <laughs> No, I think it, I think it's really cool watching the whole thing come together. It's a relief to yeah. see something that's not, you know, high tech based. That's the same as somebody would have done it three hundred years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. I was in um, I was in college, and I did I did printmaking, and, and printmaking is it's it's wood cuts, lino cuts, etchings, things like that. And I found myself, the further I got into college, uh, the more I gravitated towards uh, relief printmaking, which is the oldest kind of printmaking that there is. I mean, it's, it's woodcuts. It's what they were illustrating books with 500 years ago. And that was, that was okay. They didn't expressly say, don't do that. But they were also kind of trying to push you towards more uh, technologically innovative methods of printmaking, and I just was not interested in it at all. And that was 20 years ago. And so um, here, 20 years later, I'm still interested in the least high tech, the lowest tech sort of art making and uh, printmaking things that, that I can do. These are turning out well. 
yeah, low, the low tech, I, I think Wendell Berry once said, he, he's got an essay called Why I Will Not Own a Computer. And it's, it's wonderfully crotchety and, and everything. And it's, it's great. And he said, as soon as you can show me uh, someone who's written something better than Dante, than the Divine Comedy on a, on a computer, I'll, I'll run out and get one. Um, it's, it's, it's not it's not the tools you know that that make the art it's the you know it's the artist behind it so I just don't see any any reason um, I do have an iPad and I do make drawings on it for my students sometimes because it's just it's very simple to project it up onto screens without me doing what I'm doing right now putting my hands in front of them but so far as the finished product goes this is I, I find this to be very superior. Most most digital um, most digital media are, are just consumed with trying to make disguise the digital part of it and say, doesn't this look just like a watercolor? Doesn't this look just like a graphite drawing? Doesn't this look just like an oil painting? I'm like, well, you know what else looks just like an oil painting? An oil painting. So <laughs> just do that. All right. So I'm I'm liking that better. This, this leaf, the little yellow, little yellow veins in the leaf there, I think are turning out, are turning out better. I feel like I keep touching some wet spots here. I'm not really sure. I'm just gonna barely put in, not really, not really an outline, but just enough to draw a contrast between the petal and the, just make it a little sharp. So are you doing that with a red pencil? That's a uh, dark brown PC. Okay. Line, of course, just a, yeah, so I will do that sometimes. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that's a, I've got a, a, a really nice uh, Tuscan red here, which is really just a brown. Sometimes I like to do that. Just it sneaks in colors, you know, where you're not expecting them to be. I don't even know if it's completely, if you can see it consciously or not, but you may say, wow, that, that really feels red over there. Um, just kind of add some color to it. You want to be, you know, pretty sparing with these colors. So I might I have to plug in over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna die. Uh, so I'll give you a little bit of close up here. This is what's going on. Got these little guys out on the side, and then pretty much all I have left are these, these group of leaves up here. Uh, for my for myself and for my students, I say I like to make notes. Uh, like I will say where I collected this. Okay. Collected from my yard. <laughs> Nine thirty twenty one. I was hmm, sounds like I'm still not plugged in over here. I always put things like dates on there. You, you just never know. Like, uh, am I? Um, when did I collect this? Was it? You know, was it springtime? Was it? Was it winter time? What's blooming when? That kind of stuff. I like to know. Hang on, I'm losing power on my phone here. I'm plugged in and I'm trying to figure out why that is. Wait. If I, I think I can back out of here. Hold on just one second here. I'm going to try something. There we go. Okay, I, I'm in now. 
All right, so I'm going to work on these last couple of last couple of leaves here. Let's see if I can't finish them, or maybe I don't have time. Maybe just maybe just a couple more, a couple more minutes on maybe this one down here. I'll do this one down here. You're okay on time, Matt. Don't hurry. Okay. These, these, I'm noticing that these leaves are serrated just a little bit. Put that in. These, these um, Spanish needles, they're, they're actually edible. You can eat the leaves. And I have, and it's funny, it tastes just like you're eating the yard. They're not that great. <laughs> 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 I guess edible doesn't mean delicious. Just <laughs> they say you can make you can make tea out of them. You can you can eat them in salads. And I I said, well, hey, I've got them growing all over the yard. Maybe I'll try it. And I did. <laughs> and <laughs> I would I would think the seeds would get permanently stuck in your throat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's one of the things I'll, I'll tell my students when we talk about plants. I, I, I try to figure out what all the, the edible plants are around here. And there's a lot of them. And we'll, uh, we'll try some of them. And, and most of them are not very good. And I always just tell them, you know, edible just means you can eat it. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're going to enjoy it or anything. It just means you're not taking a trip to the hospital. If you eat it. So we'll, <laughs> we'll make salads sometimes out of, uh, well, out of the yard. And, uh, make drawings of them and then make salads out of them and you get the whole experience. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can brighten this one up just a little bit. There's a little bit of a sheen on this one here. Just a little bit of a sheen on the leaves there. There's a, a little bit of a boxiness to these stems. It looks like there's a kind of a line that goes down there. I don't know what that's about yet. So anyway, that's how I go about doing it. Um, I guess if I just continue this, it would just be more of the same. Um, do, uh, do you guys have any comments? Like, do you do you watercolor or, or draw or do anything like that? Any of you? Or is this just like I think, a, a? I think only some of us are artists. Okay. <laughs> what kind? What kind of? This this is this is maybe you know half of what I do. I. When I do drawings, I prefer, I prefer to draw from life, but I do do a lot of drawing from my imagination as well. But for these particular kind of drawings, I, I don't ever draw from photographs or anything. I'm always drawing from life because I find that it informs the rest of my, the rest of my artwork. Mm -hmm. So what, what, kind of, what kind of artwork are, are you all doing then? Joan, why don't you uh, describe yeah. what you do, which is really interesting. <laughs> I, I use a, a, I like to oil paint, um, but I use a lot of mixed media and found objects in my work. Oh, yeah. Um, so some of them are, are 2D relief things, you know, and then some of them are small sculptures. Um, but I, I admire people that can watercolor. I think that I've tried that. <sighs> and it, it's, it's, it's one of the hardest uh, mediums in my mind because uh, with oil paint you can go and mess <laughs> you know really uh, remove it or and lay down and remove it again and you know but with watercolor you can't make too many mistakes so no once it's once it's there it's there yeah with oil paints yeah. you got oh I made a mistake I'll come back next Tuesday and fix it it'll still be wet <laughs> <you know? laughs> right yeah <laughs> but I had not thought about using, I, I have a prism um, 
Prisma uh, pencils also, and I use mm -hmm. a lot of uh, colored pencils, but I hadn't thought about mixing them with, with the watercolor. So yeah, it, it, really that was nice. a real, yeah. that changed everything when I, when I started to do that, because yeah. I, I could get some precision that I couldn't, I couldn't get with a brush. My, I don't know if it's just my, you know, my handiwork or what is not precise enough, but I could, yeah. I could really get it once I started using the colored pencils, like this, like this flower here, I'm pretty happy with the, the flower, but without the, yeah. without the colored pencils, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get that real sharpness to it. Mm -hmm. I, I know that this is this is not what we were talking about, but um, here's, a, here's another book that I keep. This is, these are drawn from imagination and stuff, but these are, this is watercolor, gouache, ink, um, colored pencils, you know, all kinds of stuff. That's, wow. you know, gouache there. So it's it's really nice and flat, but then I got a little bit of colored pencil on top of the gouache, uh, which I think turned out well. Uh, same thing here. This is ink and gouache, colored pencil, some gold leaf, stamps. You know, I just I, I put it all together there. However, whatever I have to do to get the colors down, that's that's what I do. So I, I'm not I'm not a purist at all. I know some people are, and I admire them, but I'm not one of them. So I'm going to just, I think I'm just going to erase uh, some of the, some of the pencil marks that are here. Just clean that up a little bit. Now, Matt, are you teaching, is this a science class also or an art class or a combination? Yes. Uh, so for seventh grade doesn't have a designated art class. They, since I'm teaching it, they rolled it into one. So we spend one day a week just with drawings. And that, that was today for them. So in the room here, I've got just bunches of skeletons and insects and um, you know, feathers and you know, all, all kinds of things, taxidermies and, and those, they'll draw like that. Or sometimes we'll take trips. We've got woods out behind the school and we'll make collections of things out that we find out behind the school and they'll bring those back and make drawings of those too. Mm -hmm. Right, and then I, I do uh, high school art and that's, I don't know. I don't make a big distinction between the, the science and the art because for me, it's all about learning to see and discovering uh, through visual media. Just learning learning through looking is really what, what it is for me. Uh -huh. I, I, think I bet your students love your class. They, they probably go they into your classroom and go, wow. <laughs> well, they tell me they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 really fun i i i find this kind of stuff fascinating and mm -hmm. i i try to i try to show that to them too like we just got uh, with my 12th graders we, we are talking about plants with my 12th graders and, and i just got talking and, and i realized i'm looking at some of their blank faces and i realized that they don't know you know how fruits are formed on plants and so we talked about you know, just pollination and, you know, what happens, you know, how, where do the seeds come from? What are fruits for and everything? And they're just, they're like, they're seven years old again. They're, they're just, they just want to know. They're really interested. Yeah. And sometimes I don't, I don't even know what they don't know. I, I, I know that I uncovered it completely by accident last year. I was talking with one of my, my classes and I made some comment and the, it came up that the, they did not know, or a big chunk of them did not know that um, meat is animal muscle. They just thought meat was some other substance, like you got your muscles and skin and bones, and then there's the meat. <laughs> they, had, they had no idea. <laughs> and so I always say, I have no idea what the blind spots are. I don't know what they are. I just thought that was something that didn't need to be said out loud. I just thought everyone knew that. 
Mm-hmm. So here I am, you know, still learning this wow. stuff. Wow. They think it grows in uh, rectangular styrofoam uh, containers <laughs> in a grocery store. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They know it that's, comes from an animal. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's kind of what I was picking up on. <laughs> I mean, do you find that a lot of these kids are just unconnected to nature because they really don't go outside much at all? Right. I, mean, I, 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 I do find that. Yes. We, uh, mm-hmm. we're a small enough school and we get to do some pretty fun field trips uh, for uh, seventh graders. We go for essentially a week long camping trip up in North Florida in the Panhandle and uh, ninth graders get to take a week down in the Everglades camping. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of them, it's, it's really the first time that they've, seen you know some of these things like last year with my seventh graders i i we went we did the camping and i said well hey uh, my friend and i who who lead the trip we decided to take the the kids fishing anyone that wanted to go fishing we would take them and so it became clear that most of the kids had never eaten fish that they caught if they fished at all and they certainly didn't know how to clean them so we got yeah. to do that. We got to bring the fish back and clean them. It, it was just a blast. It was a really fun time. Hmm. So. It's awesome. So if I can get them to sit down and draw something for an hour, you know, they, they've come in contact with something brand new for them that they've never seen before. And now they understand much, much better. After having drawn. Well, I think that I'm just, I'm poking around at this point because this is going to be another 30 or 40 minutes to finish this. And I think that this is, this part of it's pretty much finished. So yeah, I think it's probably a good stopping place. Really beautiful. Yes. Yeah. You showed all the basic principles. It's really been, really been interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, thank you. I'm beautiful glad. Work. Any, any, anything else? <laughs> any questions? Any, anyone? Any other, yeah. Any other questions or? Uh, some people wanted, um, they tweet and they, I think that's, they wanted me to video, if I was on Twitter, to videotape on Twitter what you were doing so they could see it because that's all they have. They don't have. Oh, um, well, I don't know about that on my end. I know it's been recorded, so I don't know what different formats. Yeah, is. I think that will be uh, sufficient. Yes. Um, yeah, this will be put I'm on. Probably- uh, this will be put on uh, on Tanasi's YouTube channel, and we'll send out a link to that. And anybody yeah. has a computer, even on your phone, you can get it. Just go to YouTube or just click on the link. But uh, uh-huh. as far as I don't think we'll tweet it, but uh, it would be too long for one thing. <laughs> but <clears throat> but it'll be on different media, and I think it's being live streamed on Facebook. Uh, we'll uh, we'll find out exactly what what page it ended up on <laughs> after after we finish here. <laughs> this is our first. Uh, First time out of the out of the gate on uh, on doing a virtual uh, art event like this during under this uh, grant. So, Victoria yes. Hewlett, who's a, a recent uh, graduate uh, of uh, ETSU, uh, is our. She has a company, uh, Thriving Appalachia Thriving, is it, Victoria? And uh, and yeah. so she is our doing our social media and a lot of other organizing for this uh, for this grant and these events. But Matt, I, w- I just want to thank you so much for all of us. Uh, for, for being here and doing this. That's been very interesting. And, uh, sure. Yeah. I had a good time. I wanted to really, just uh, put this out there. That's if, if anybody's interested, that's my, yeah, that's turn my it, website. Uh, turn it clockwise uh, 90 degrees. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So your website is St. Luke's, St. Luke's Attic. Attic. Com. Com, right. Mm-hmm. St. Luke S Attic.com. Okay. Yep. St. Great. Luke's Attic. Well, thank you everyone for being with us. And, uh, you know, we hope you enjoyed it and learned some things. I know I did. And, and uh, please remember to, to put your name and address in the chat if you haven't already done that. So well, thanks again for everybody uh, being here. And, uh, and uh, we'll have other events and you'll be on the list to get information about them. Thanks again, Matt. Good night. Sure thing. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good evening, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye.